Welcome to Oil & Whiskey, an Ironclad Original. I am Josh Henning. I'm Phil Gerber. I'm Jeremy Gerber. Welcome to Oil & Whiskey, an Ironclad Original, presented by Blade HQ. Go to bladehq.com slash oil and whiskey to shop their selection of knives. Today, we're going to be talking with Hart Fab founder and fabricator Josh Hart. We're also bringing back a new segment called Whiskey Throttle. I guess it would be new. It's still kind of newer. New, newish. newish. A newish segment called Whiskey Throttle. But first, it's time for On the Gas. In this segment, we want to take some time to shout out an individual vendor shop or company that's got their foot on the gas. Somebody that's doing great work and taking their projects and industry to the next level. Who do we have this week, fellas? This week, uh, we're going to go with Jason Graham Hot Rods. Jason, Dude. Jason Graham. Is that his theme song? <laughs> yeah. See if it is now. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, <laughs> Jason Graham. Yeah. I don't know if that helps or hurts the... Probably the hurts. Intro. Yeah. At any rate, it's Jason, done now. Jason Graham's just... <laughs> Basically kicking shit's ass. He is. I'd say that's a dude. I mean, it's him and his wife. As far as I know, I don't know if he's got anybody else helping him over there. Now, last time I talked to him, I think he had some part time help. Does he? Pretty much, it's just them. Yeah. But, I know, we've been following him for years. I think we saw him at Detroit. Shit, that had to be ten years ago. We had a really badass Nash with like some lime fire headers. Oh, yeah. and Just love the style, and he just kind of continually has that mild custom look that he incorporates in a lot of different cars. Yeah, he's yeah. got he's got his look for sure. He caught me with that Model A, that sedan. That yeah, was one that was just man, I just stared at it. So it was out at SEMA. I want to say I just just a gorgeous car, great lines, great stance. Model A for being a simple car, it's the easiest car to fuck, fuck up. up the proportions. <laughs> yeah, and he nailed that. Like when the Galaxy just came out with this fucking sweet. Yeah, and uh, yeah, he kicked our ass out at Barrett Jackson with that. We went for that. Uh, what was the Barrett Jackson Cup? And that, I mean, rightfully so, that's a bitchin' car. Man, he knocked it out of the park with that thing. You don't Tons. see many of those done, like, full Tons. modern, you know, high-tech kind of done. It was, it was cool. Yeah, for for a guy with, you know, a, a smaller staff, he puts stuff out there, and it's high-end stuff. I mean, loaded, there's nothing shortcutted. It's loaded with machine parts. Uh, yeah, they machine the whole grill on that one yeah. Yeah. and bumper, or is it just the grill machine? I think the whole car might have been. <laughs> no, it was, it was just, maybe it was the grill and all the trim. Yeah, I don't know yeah. about the bumper. He's got that that cameo was just I saw it at Nashville um, in Primer, and that thing's looks like all the, oh, the chassis powder coated, painted, put together, and that thing's going together now too. He rocks it out. Yeah, yeah, good dude, man. It's super quiet. Seems like a humble guy. You know, we've had a few handshakes, few head nods. Chatted a few times, you know, exchanged a couple words here and there, but he got a lot of good stuff going on, man. It's cool to watch. I follow all of his stuff, and uh, yeah, great work. Check him out on Instagram at Jason Graham Hot Rods. Jason, Jason Graham. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> that's gonna stick. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> no Whether charge likes either. It or not. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Hart is the owner and founder of Hart Fabrication full-service hot rod and custom sheet metal parts shop located just outside of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Josh has produced and created parts for high-end builds for more than 17 years. You can follow his latest projects on Instagram at heart underscore fab or on, you got a website too, right? I do, yes. Yes. It's uh, heart hyphen fab dot heart hyphen fab dot com. Check it out. Josh Hart, welcome to Oil & Whiskey. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It is an honor and a privilege. <laughs> Oh, it's good to have you, man. It's good to catch up. We haven't gotten a chance to hang out at any car shows lately, so I guess right. this, is, this will be a good virtual hangout. Yeah. Crack some beers, sure. some whiskeys, and shoot the shit a little bit here. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, well, like we do with pretty much every guest, uh, kind of take us back to the beginning, that 17 years ago or, or so. How did, you, uh, how did you choose this uh, path? For a career choice, uh, this or path, did it choose this you? path usually chooses you. <laughs> <laughs> it's been an interesting one, I would say. I mean, uh, like I've been in the business since probably 2003, I would say. So you know, my parents were car people. My dad was like a GM tech during like the muscle car era. Um, when I was born, my mom was driving the 79 Trans Am. Um, so, you know, I was always in the cars, around the cars, you know, as I got older, through the high school ages, um, I 
my interest grew in the cars. When I was 14, I think we ended up getting, my dad brought home an S Blazer for us to build as like my first car. Um, you know, through that time, you know, I wanted a lifted square body. That's all I kind of ever wanted was a square body lifted truck. That must be a um, generation. The- <laughs> I'm the same way, man. That's same age, same. That's, that's what you had to have back then. Lifted square yeah. body. Hell yeah. Yours yeah. would have had a Confederate flag headliner in it. <laughs> yeah. but, you know, ours is a little different, but <laughs> he go <would>. ahead. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how the lowered truck thing got started. Um, we went to like a lot of car shows, you know, good guys, Columbus, the NSRA nationals. Um, and you know, over time it, the interest grew. So after, you know, going to a lot of shows, you know, I kind of decided that I wanted to do this for a living. You know, my goal was to like go work for Boyd Coddington basically at that time, you know, Boyd Coddington was like the huge guy on the map, I guess, you know, he was the guy to kind of be. Um, so I set the path to kind of do the WyoTech deal, went to WyoTech, you know, took all the classes, took the street rod upholstery class, the fabrication class, the chassis, the engine class, basically anything that would kind of give me a uh, heads up on what would be better, I guess, or what would give me the information I needed. So do that whole deal. You know, you send your 70 resumes out or whatever, never heard a word from anybody, race shots, fab shots, um, never heard a word from anybody. So now at that time, did, was like, right. were, were they still during that era? Was it the general that like standardized template of I took 12 hours of street rod, 14 hours of upholstery and my name is Josh Hart? Yeah, that was I, pretty that was pretty much it. I don't know if they're still around, but they need to change that shit because nobody can, you know, it's not like you're getting into some, like, it's not like a feeder school for another school. Yeah. They, be creative. Have a fucking, yeah. Be a little creative. Have a resume. Show some pictures. Tell me about yourself. They you know? got some to it. Your they fault. got to it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's your own fault, dude. <laughs> no, I know. I don't, I don't, I don't, knowing what I know now, I mean, I've heard you say that before. Like, I, you just threw the resumes right in the trash. Yeah. You know? they, they got the tuition. They weren't really worried about the right. job placement. Like, this one's done. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I didn't have any real experience to speak of either. So, um, I worked through like a, a car dealership all through high school. Um, go to the car dealership after I graduate, work in the body shop for like three months. I absolutely hated it. I can't do body work to save my life. You know, I can paint, I can mask, but body work isn't my thing. Uh, we went to a car show. I grew up about an hour and a half north of Pittsburgh. So we went to a car show, like indoor car show in Pittsburgh, and we came across you know, a shop that was there that had some pretty cool projects, like late model stuff. Um, so, you know, eventually, you know, I asked, hey, are you hiring? And that was the first, like, real job in industry was Redline Performance Motorsports or RPM. Um, it's kind of a better known place. So when I started there, that place was more of like an accessory shop, stereo shop. Um, so, you know, it was a lot of lowering kits, lift kits, you know, there wasn't a lot of fabrication stuff that kind of went into like more air ride stuff from there. Um, I was traveling when I got the job there, I was traveling back and forth, like basically driving all the time, like an hour and a half each way. Uh, sooner or later, I'd lost my license for speeding tickets, like the accumulation of it. So I had to move to the Pittsburgh area, basically. Um, Throughout, you know, after I moved there, I started getting a little more serious. Um, you know, we kind of got booked up with the Terziches and finished some cars that were like orphans from other shops, basically. Um, and that kind of launched, I would say, what that whole company kind of started doing. They shifted from the custom, like the late model stuff to more custom car stuff. And from there, you know, it just kind of took off with that company. Um, you know, doing the shows, building the cars, you know, it just, I mean, we were kind of traveling together, I think at the time, you know, I would do a lot of shows with Kurt and everything like that. Yeah, that um, must have been, what, you know, what year was that? Because that was, I mean, must have been right when we met. Was that like 05, 05, 06? 04, 05. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I started there in like 03. So like 04, 05 was like yeah. the old steel Starliner sure. kind of area. Yeah, era. so before I think we formally met, I always just knew you as like, 
the dude standing next to the car because you didn't say much. I mean, you still don't say a lot. <laughs> oh, but, no, that's you know, true. Just that, that, like, that's, cars that's there. There's a yeah. guy. Like eventually, you know, I, I don't know how we met, but yeah, eventually yeah. we we broke the ice and and that car made us. That, that was a big statement car back in that uh, yeah, in yeah. that era. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and we didn't build those cars the whole way. I mean, it was kind of like I mean, I didn't have a lot of experience, you know, and the other guys there didn't either. So it was kind of like a, a a big eye opening for everyone, I guess. Um, so yeah, that was probably 2005, and then you know, just it compounded from there. You know, Street Machine of the Year finalists, you know, Muscle Machine of the Year deal. Um, you know that deal started i kind of kind of see the writing on the wall like 2011 ish um you know whether it was the economy or other problems um i kind of made the decision that i was going to bounce out of there um you know my daughter was about to be born and things were happening that wasn't making me comfortable in that situation so i moved on from there to do a 32 truck for a friend customer of that shop that's kind of a big deal i know you guys have worked on um i went to work for him and did like a it started out as a 32 truck you know 32 car but into a truck um the plan was to finish that truck and kind of go from there but that kind of turned into me doing motorcycles and some other projects I think one of those uh, might have even uh, one of those might even been mine that got thrown in the uh, mix. Isn't it? it was actually yeah. Yeah, it was, it was your bike at one point. You did to clean up my yeah. mess. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if it's a mess. So that, yeah. Um, so I did that for a while. That kind of turned into like I was doing more repair style stuff, and it just wasn't for me. Kind of in the meantime, I had gotten like a shop. Like I only had a one car garage in my house, so I got a shop to kind of work on my own things. So. I don't know, I think that was probably 2010-ish, maybe, or maybe, I guess it was later than that. But um, So I had my own shop. Eventually, that kind of turned into starting my own shop with a partner. So at that time, that was high-octane hot rods is what we kind of went by there. So I had an own, my own shop. I really didn't know the business like side of it at all. Um, you know, I had a partner at the time that hustled, but, you know, things kind of fell apart there. We did an F-100 that debuted at SEMA that was kind of a huge deal. We did that in like three months. Um, we did a, the brown square body kind of like in the same year. Both of those trucks were like top 10 of um, street trucks for truck of the year. Um, that relationship fell apart. Um, it was kind of a difficult time financially, I guess, because I wasn't smart with how we were building or doing that kind of stuff. Um, so in like 2015-ish, I went to work for Customs by Tilcary, which was kind of like an RPM with better financial situation, better better managing, I should say. Um, you know, and it was actually like a lot of guys from the RPM era that worked there. Uh, so I worked there for a while. We did I don't know, a handful of cars that were pretty, pretty high end stuff. Um, and, you know, I just wasn't feeling, I guess, satisfied, I guess, there, because it was like a clock puncher job, kind of like, you know, there was no, it was low stress. I mean, it was ideal if that's what you're looking for, but I kind of wanted a little bit more. So you want a little, had, you want a little more yeah. stress. <laughs> well, yeah, stress, I guess, I guess satisfaction. Yeah. It's, yeah. And knowing what I know now, I mean, I probably would have, done things differently but um, <laughs> so about four years ago um you know i took the leap to go back in full time for myself no partners or anything at the you know the heart fab i kind of changed that over to heart fab um and that kind of shifted you know from doing the trucks i mean we still do a lot of trucks but then the parts business kind of spawned from doing the trucks and present day today, you know, the parts business has pretty taken pretty much taken over the project stuff. Um, you know, I started by just doing one generation and then people would ask for the next generation. Um, and you know, now we cover anything from the sixty to ninety-eight basically. Um currently working on the fifty five to fifty nine stuff. So that's nice. kind of a travel in a nutshell, I should say. Yeah. So these are all interfenders <laughs> for all lowered trucks. Yeah, all, all lower trucks, you know. I mean, we kind of offer, like, complete 
packages for front to back, you know, for like somebody who's going to put your chassis, like a slam spec chassis under a C pen, you know, we have the inner fenders, the rear tubs that are the right size, the right height and everything to raise the bed for, um, you know, kind of like total truck solutions to kind of simplify the deal for basically any, any truck that's, you know, has a decent ride height needs all of that stuff changed. Yeah, I don't, so I don't think a lot of people realize it's a that, huge hurdle. Oh man, that is <laughs> that is like a monumental undertaking. Really, it looks like okay, I gotta like make inner fenders. Yeah, it's not yeah. that easy. I mean that that is a huge problem solver. We've used you know probably half a dozen sets on things, and regardless, I mean whether it's a like a simple survivor truck or a high end truck, I mean that is like you shave sixty hours off of your build time. Oh like, yeah, that's. Yeah, that's a, a big thing. I mean, there are a ton of shops buying because it saves them time. I mean, it's, you know, it's it's like you said, it's a week's worth of work saved by, you know, just making a phone call. So we do anything from like the garage builders to the full high-end shop deal. You do anything for the Fords, like bump sides and dent sides? No, we have not done anything. Everybody asks about it. It's just a matter of actually getting the truck to, to kind of do anything. I mean, it's how the whole parts deal started was, you know, I kind of do some pretty crazy engine based stuff. And everybody said like, Hey, I'm going to buy that. And we'll realistically, it takes two to 300 hours to build one. So I kind of backed that down a little bit into something that could be done, you know, in a day or so, um, and have some kind of the similar result, basically. I still don't know how you do what you do for the price point. I mean, you get what you get and you're like, you, cause you, like you said, that would have been 200 hours. I mean, yeah. Well, when you start doing it and repeating it, yeah, and not to mention, there's something, I don't know if it's in the water out there in Pennsylvania, but we've called it the PBRA for years. We've dubbed it the, the Pennsylvania <laughs> Bead Roller Association. Because, <laughs> dude, the guys out there can make some shit. Can but, run a bead roller. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah. like nothing I've ever seen. We want and to do a like an NBA logo, but like you run through a bead roller with a piece of shit. Oh, that's awesome. and red, white, and blue. <laughs> the backwards hat, yeah. you know <laughs> Pennsylvania. I guess I kind of skipped over a lot of stuff there, but I mean, a lot of the guys in this area kind of spawn from the RPM guys. I probably had a, a hand in teaching, I guess. Um, so probably that style, I guess, probably rubbed off on a lot of those guys. Um, you know, EJ is a big one I work with a lot. Um, you know, he kind of started his own deal here a couple of years ago and did the killer Model A. Um, Travis Ziegler, you know, we work together and he's done doing his own thing as well. So, you know, as it comes time for like my shop to grow, these guys already have their own deal. So it makes it difficult for me to find talented help. But, uh, I mean, I, we're not, I don't look at it as a competition. I mean, it's, you know, we kind of all help each other out. That's very, it's cool to see your influence in those guys because it's very apparent. You know, I know anytime I see that work and EJ is obviously growing and evolved and doing some really awesome stuff but back in the day back in the rpm days you said you're you know when it first kind of started out y'all were doing a lot of uh, uh of terzik's work and uh working behind of a lot of other shops what was the first car that y'all kind of started from scratch and like we all get to build this you know from from ground up uh, we did that 33 that uh mm-hmm. alloy body 33 that was kind of a full deal it was a red and gray two-tone deal um, that was probably the first one I think we did turgits wise. We did like a 40 Chevy that was a complete build. Um, I mean, this is like 2005, 2006 ish. Um, probably one of the bigger ones, more popular ones was Jerry's Willys, the, yep. the, the blue and silver one. one. That yeah. one, that, that's, that's still a cool car. That's the first, for, that one, and then obviously the, the Runt, the Nova was the first from RPM. I saw all of Terzik's cars, but it was always, you know, Terzik stuff. You know, yeah, there was, yeah. there was, there was, nobody knew like the, the guy behind the curtain, you know, the guys behind the curtain building them. Yeah. For a while there, it was, I mean, it was kind of like RPM running as pro rides there for a while. I mean, it was I don't know, probably three, four or five years span. Um, you know, and I think that kind of helped get everything off, off the ground. But I mean, that was, uh, it, it eventually switched back to the RPM deal, RPM hot rods deal. Um, I mean, it was, there was a lot in that time that happened and, a lot of hours and i mean i put a lot into that place i mean as if it were my own i guess you could say um you know i hated to see what happened happen but i mean i had to uh jump ship there to not sink yeah. I, I, I like at those days as that's kind of our golden 
age, you know, of that, that, that year. So we're all coming up together. Yeah, that was, you know, lateral G. You were looking at all the builds. I mean, the year that the Runt came out. I mean, there was so yeah, many high-end cars. It was just the energy at Columbus it, that year. was. You were so inspired by what everybody was doing, so excited, so nervous that, yeah. like, oh, I'm building something badass, but shit. Like, There's seven, Josh eight, nine other people building bad. At RPM, shit. they're going to show up with something fucking wicked, and right. Goolsby's going to show up with something wicked. It was, it just it never yeah. seemed like that. Anyway, no, it's it, like it really does. I mean, it was fun. Like, it was like fun to have that like friendly competition deal. I mean, every time we showed up, like the roadster shop would kick our ass. But I mean, <laughs> that's kind of we kind of got used to that, I guess. But it, it seemed like every time we had something we thought we were gonna like do very well with, it was just like you guys brought the space shuttle out. So <laughs> it was yeah, it was good. Yeah, Josh, I know all about that. <laughs> 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 I got, you know, something that's interesting in, in hearing your story, it's that, that perseverance and the same, like, I mean, it's like the same outline of what everybody that's successful now has been through. You know, you, you listen, like everybody that thinks they're just going to jump in, I'm going to start a shop, I'm going to have a hot rod shop. It's going to be easy. No, it's not. I mean, you started in what, early 2000s, two, three, four different shops, started a shop closed a shop, went back to work, started another shop and just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And now, I mean, I think of you and your name. I mean, HeartFab is one of the mainstays in the industry. You know, mm -hmm. it's a, it's an iconic name. It's, you got a great reputation and obviously none of that shit comes easy. And that's, no, you could. It doesn't gone come and, easy, but that's the simple yeah. recipe right there. Simply yeah. work your yeah. fucking ass <laughs> off. For, work your ass off yeah. for a year. Yeah. Well, we say that, but I want to. We need to interview somebody that's a, a, a shitbag loser, and then <laughs> see what they're see the opposite. Yeah, of yeah, we need to yeah. see what actually if if there's like, yeah, dude, I just like you got hard, so I just quit and like did something else. Yeah. And then well, that was hard, they so I quit say, that. Remember that one guy that gave up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, 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 nobody, nobody remembers. Nobody remembers. <laughs> How important do you think all the, I don't want to say failures, but all the, the stumbling blocks along the way were to, to shaping you into what you are now? Uh, it was a major part. I mean, I learned a lot from the place that I work at. You know, I took a lot, a little from everything there of how they were managed, how they were run. Um, you know, the parts business kind of spawned off because I'm not great at being billable on projects, I guess. I'm not saying being billable, but, you know, being it's very hard, difficult to be completely profitable, I guess, on the projects. So um, once the parts started rolling and the cash flow and everything like that, I mean, that was, you know, where it was at. I mean, I love building the cars, but I mean, the parts is, you know, it's in, it's out, it's gone. But I mean, I think that had everything to do with that. I mean, I, I guess looking at the time, I was the failures seemed like the end, but I mean, it, it definitely made where I'm at today. Was there anything that got you through all those that you didn't just give up? Like, what was it that kept you moving forward? Was it love of the cars, passion, just yeah. I mean, that's this is all I do, all I've ever wanted to do. I mean, it's I don't have any other skills basically. I mean, if like this doesn't work, I mean, I'm gonna have to like start an OnlyFans page or something. I don't, I don't know. What <laughs> I don't know, dude. Honestly, I don't know how successful ahead. that's gonna be. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of fetishes and shit out there, but I. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'm with you, dude. I don't know nothing else. Like, you never know. <laughs> no, it's it's yeah. interesting to hear your take on the parts business because I think we've preached that to a lot of guys that the part stuff is just good, steady income coming in. Once you can kind of develop something that there is a demand for and you can get the repeatability down to where you can easily make it over and over again and at a price point where other people can buy it, I think that gives you the opportunity to really start scaling and growing the business. And we've talked to so many people who just kind of in one ear out the other, but yep. you know, I think you've uh, you're a great example of finding a, a niche where there was a problem and no other solution and just yeah. making something happen with it. And really, if you think about it, I mean, most shops are capable of building, you know, wheel tubs and, you know, and, but, you nobody is capable after you've done it you've figured it out you've templated it and you can reproduce it it's it's like you know unless somebody's doing something wild over the top very shapely that's specific to the car it's almost like not fair to do to your customer to not buy those that know? was my that was my point that's what he's talking about it's very difficult to to be 
profitable and bill for all the hours because there's no finality in, in, in the part side of things, there's a finality to it. So it's gotta be, you have to design this, you have to engineer this, you have to build this. It's in a box and it costs this much. And then you ship it. When you're building a car, there is no, it's, you know, you're doing the design work, you look at that, well, we could tweak this, we could do this, we could do that. Like you, to your point, there's shops out there that are more than capable of building those inner fenders, but they would build them four and five and six times the cost of what they could have bought them. Same thing, they could build a chassis from scratch, yeah. right? But for the cost, and then it's making everybody, the parts business side, the car builder side, everybody more profitable and making the customers more happy when you are filling those niches um, and you're utilizing those other industries, I mean, other uh, companies in the industry to fill those voids. Yeah. The finality part of it, I think, is the difficult part. It's, it's If you have to finish a project or a product and put it in a box and ship it, like it has, it, it has it to be done. O- it has to be done and it can right. only cost what it costs, you know, when you're building a car, Josh, you know this, I mean, it's limitless. I mean, how many, how much time can you spend on, you know, gap in a door? And you can just keep on, yeah, keep, you, on. You, you just, <laughs> keep on, just keep doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Are you looking at other ways to come up with new products, make them faster, make them more repeatable? Where's your, yeah. your goal product line wise? That's kind of what I'm doing now, I'm going back and refining the original stuff that we had and kind of making it faster and better to fit. Um, kind of the struggle I'm having now is, I guess, the scaling up side of it. Um, when I first did this, I never thought like we would be doing thousands of these. I mean, um, so I guess I didn't take it into an account. I mean, I made them be fast, but I mean, um, you know, right now we're working on, we have the carbon fiber and the fiberglass 6772, um, which kind of fills a void, but most people still want the steel stuff. Um, we haven't really ventured into like looking to get stamped or anything like that. Um, you know, I, I take a lot of like, like what you guys talk about and scaling up your business and how you compartmentalize everything and stuff like that. You know, I've been trying to put that kind of into play a little bit. Um, you know, right now it's only just me and one other guy. Um, so it's, you know, it's kind of in between right now, but yeah, it's, I mean, I really want to get the parts efficient enough to where I can work on more things, develop more things, you know, right now I'm just kind of head down trying to keep fulfilling orders. Um, you know, so it's kind of, I don't want to say I have the blinders on, but I'm always looking for a little bit better process, but, uh, you know, they improve, you know, every, every step. So, um, but yeah, only getting more efficient is a, a major goal I want to work towards. So right now, how does the process work? I mean, you're laser cutting or plasma cutting some parts and then you're bending them, bead rolling them, welding them, finishing them, putting in a box, shipping them, billing them, yeah. Yeah, answering so right the now, phones. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I wear a lot of hats. I and, mean, it's, and you got a family and you got to sleep at some point, yeah. like a few hours, yeah. right? Fortunately, the family and the sleep is the part that suffers yeah, the most. It's got to give somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So um, what, yeah. are you still putting, I mean, you obviously got to be working some hours. Are you still thrashing 10, 15 hours a day or how do you balance that? Uh, there really is no balance, I guess. I mean, at this point, I mean, it's, <laughs> I've been backing off the weekends a little bit more, but yeah, I mean, it's 10 to 15 hours a day, you know, six, seven days a week. Um, you know, right now I'm the guy that answers the phone, the guy that builds the parts, the guy that ships the parts. Um, you know, like I said, I do have some, some good help at this point, um, to where I can hand things off and he can just knock them out. Um, but you know, I'm, you know, when I first started making all these parts, I was cutting them by hand. So I would cut everything on the bandsaw or the shear or whatever and do that. Then I stepped up and got a plasma table. So then I had to learn the plasma table and the CNC, like the CAD part of it, the CNC part of it. Um, so now, you know, we design everything in CAD just 2D and then um, plasma cut it, you know, lay it out. We have templates, clean it up, lay it out, have templates for the bead designs, lay out the beads, roll the beads, you know, work the edges and everything's pretty much finished, you know, by hand. It's fit and welded and finished by hand. And, you know, I don't ship enough volume at this point. I can, but I don't um, to have like a full-time shipping department, I guess you could say. Sure. Uh, you know, we try to accumulate a couple sets and, you know, box multiple sets at a time and try to make that efficient. But that's where I kind of feel like it's like the in-between of being busy enough to 
bring on more people, but not. And then, you know, we try to make time to work on the projects on top of that. So that's like a whole nother ball of like stress, I guess, to keep up with the customers and, you know, keep the build customers happy as well. Um, you know, I have some very patient customers that are basically repeat people that have built projects for in the past or worked on their vehicles before. Um, so they kind of know what they're going to get in the end and they've been very patient. Um, but it's all, uh, I guess, a juggling, just trying to do this the best you can all day, every day. So that's, you know, why we much. respect Josh so much is because after what he said, one, the perseverance, but he's not done the, the, I guess, whatever the cool thing is the last couple of years to go on Instagram and be like books closed. Don't call me. I've got yep. enough stuff for the rest of the year. Well, Fuck, just, fuck off. I'm working. Don't yeah, bother don't, calling. Don't call. <laughs> I'm busy working on other people's projects. You see that all over the place, you know, and that's not like you said, the perseverance. It's if you got to work 14 hours a day, take, take what you're getting, make the customers happy and, and keep going. Right. Right on. Yeah. That's the only way to do it. I mean, that's, I don't, the whole Instagram thing. I mean, I think it's good for, it's good to like see what other people are doing, but you know, the egos like are through the roof anymore. It seems like, I mean, it's like, yeah. I lay pretty low anymore, but I mean, it's, it's a interesting place. Interesting. It, it's, interesting. It, it certainly is. I think that's probably one of the things that, you know, drew me to you that why I've enjoyed the friendship because there is no ego and your Instagram page you know, just reiterates that it's very product driven. It, it seems to do a great job of promoting your brand, what you do, and it never comes off as like, look at this. This is so much better than this. Or it's, right. You don't really see pictures of just a weld. Are you like flexing on anything? Hashtag it's, weld porn. Yeah, it's, it's products yeah. and it's actually producing something, sending it out the door and it's good shit. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is what I built. This is how much it cost. Call me, I'll make you yeah, something. like a business, right? Almost like <laughs> just like a right. business. Yeah. <laughs> right. uh, if you could go back in time <laughs> to any point in time while you were working and tell yourself something, what time would that be, and what would you tell yourself? Don't fall in love with her. <laughs> Stop <laughs> tipping. <laughs> <laughs> just put your money back in your pocket. Go home. Go to sleep. <laughs> I got to get up early for the car show the next morning. <laughs> I wish I probably would have done, gave it a go of doing the business. I don't know what era it was, but like really going in on the business all in like sooner, like when I was younger. Um, you know, I don't, I mean, I'm not an old, older, but you know, I just, I feel like I should have done that earlier. I should have gave it more effort, I think. Um, you know, when I closed the high octane hot rod side of it, I probably gave up too early, I'm going to guess. Um, I probably should have won at that a little bit harder, I think. Um, you know, every step has been like a learning point. Like, I mean, every failure has been like a learning a stepping stone, I guess you, I could say. Um, you know, if there's a time I was going to go back to that I really enjoyed, I mean, when you're working with talented people, probably like, you know, in the RPM days, I mean, it's cool to like feed off of each other and, and build um stuff together i guess you know share ideas and you know this guy's doing like something kick ass on this end here on the other end doing something just as cool um you know i miss that kind of like camaraderie i guess you know i'm doing it like on your own i mean it's for the past four years i've been working by myself a lot i guess um so you know you kind of get the blinders on and kind of like get in a hole a little bit i guess uh, um as far as having fresh ideas and moving quickly i guess um that's probably one of the biggest things i miss i guess working at a bigger shop and not as opposed to that not having my own shop um you know with that being said the, the guy i recently brought on has some really good and new ideas and it's bringing some kind of fresh things into the shop i guess um so you know i'd like to continue building like the right team basically um you know, to be able to do that myself, I guess, under my own roof instead of somebody else's. Sure. The, the that explains why you didn't come to work for us full time, no matter how hard we tried, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> man, we tried like hell. We, we, we did try. He came out I'm, and worked I'm, on I'm, some stuff for like a week, I think. It was kick-ass, but... I'm, 
talked about when, was it Illinois? Did. I mean, Pennsylvania is not that fucking nice, you know. It's, no, it's not, but uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's very intimidating. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> you have like some of the ten most talented people in industry. I mean, it's uh, it's very intimidating. I mean, it's uh, you know, you're the the roadster shop. I mean, I, which I feel is kind of the benchmark in industry. Um, you know, I'm like some kid from Pennsylvania that. I don't know. It was it was intimidating. I mean, I greatly appreciate the opportunity. Um, but, we you know, wouldn't have been chasing you if we didn't think you could fit in. I I, I agree. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, you know, I'll just continue to sell and buy your chassis and put them under customers. That's, that's fantastic, man. Well, you touched on something that was really really interesting there when you talked about the camaraderie and those early days of like feeding off each other and working hand in hand. And I noticed, like in this day and age, it seems like there's you get two different kind of methods of working. You get some guys who are super talented that they, even though they're wildly talented, they just want to work by themselves, don't want to share their knowledge. And it, it's almost, I don't want to call it a, a complex, but I don't, I don't exactly know what, what differentiates those guys from like, I just want to do this. I don't want to teach anybody. I don't want to work with anybody to those relationships and that team of, like feeding off of each other because I always, you know, like me and Chad back in the day fed off each other like crazy and knew each other's strengths and weaknesses. And it, man, it just builds you up. You were teaching and learning so much. Yeah. Daily, every single day, everything you worked on, you were teaching and learning vice versa. And then there, like you said, the other guys are, there's other, another group of people that are like, you can't teach me anything and I'm not teaching you nothing. Yeah. Like lone wolf. I learned, I learned all this on my own and it's not going anywhere. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, I've, I guess I've always kind of been the elder guy in the shop. So I've never really acted that way. I mean, if there's somebody that wants to learn, I mean, I'm going to tell them everything they need to know. I mean, that's, if somebody's eager to do it, um, you know, I'm game to do it. Um, you know, I've, I haven't worked at a lot of places, I guess, where I guess somebody was maybe more knowledgeable. I mean, knowledgeable in other areas, but I mean, everybody has, I guess, their, their strengths but I, i've never looked at it that way i mean the camaraderie is like kind of what makes it like what makes it fun going to work every day i mean that's when you're working with the right people for sure is uh have you as you look back over you know your 15 plus years uh what was some of the favorite projects favorite stuff you've built been a part of um, so with the parts business stuff, I think it's very cool to see the, what other people do with my parts, I guess. Um, I guess I get a lot of like, Hey, you're wasting your talent, but you know, to me, it's kind of like a little bit of a different like gratification, um, satisfaction, I guess. Um, you know, over the years, you know, Jerry's Chevy two is probably one of my favorite cars that I still kind of, you know, I guess maintain today cause she's, you know, a local customer. Um, the trucks, you know, the square body truck that we did, the brown and kind of tan colored one, um, that was like just a fun truck to drive, fun truck to use. Um, you know, there's, you know, the 32 truck that I know you guys have worked on, like that's a pretty cool deal. And I was kind of involved that at like the conception of it. Um, I know EJ is working on that now a little bit. I'd like to see that thing done. Um, the Pontiac the kill carries finish, you know, we kind of like went all in on that thing, um, you know, with ideas and there was no kind of hell hold back restrictions on that thing. You know, anything we came up with that we did it, which I've never really had that flexibility before, I guess. Yeah, that car gave um, me anxiety looking at it, like all the chrome and trim pieces. And I'm like, final assembly oh on that God. would have been a yeah. nightmare. Yeah. I, uh, cool I car. Left before that happened, but I think EJ, timing. Kind of, <laughs> EJ and the other guys kind of, kind of got to do that. Stuff. You probably got a lot of phone calls though, right? Like, hey man, how does this go together? You know, like when we, like, when we would do those parts of Co-Carries, it was basically like the fabrication stuff was EJ and I working on it, like, together the whole time. Like, I, I think we turned out that car relatively quickly in like nine months up until the paint side of it. Um, so, you know, that was like pretty much every day. So we both knew how it went together and, and everything like that. Um, so it was kind of, kind of, we, we, he already knew what was going on. I think when I kind of bailed out on it. 
Yeah, you, you've been involved in a lot of cool projects. And I don't know if everybody out there knows, you know, that you were probably the driving force behind most of those, but those are a lot of pretty iconic cars, you know, that the vast majority of them still would like stand out in a crowd today. You know, everything that Nova, I mean, today that Nova is still super badass. You know, right. I think we, we drew from that a lot with the little, I don't know what you call it, the Chanel or coach where they kind of ghosted in. That yeah. was like your guys kind of like little. Oh yeah. The repeating uh, yeah, tone on tone. Yeah, it was patterns just like super cool. And I feel like, I know I stole that at some point and used it somewhere. But sure. yeah, was, inspired by it. Yeah. I'm sure. Inspired, <laughs> yeah. It was, it was an inspiration, not a theft. What is it <laughs> on the car project side? What are you working on now in the shop? Um, so we have the Indy truck, the Indy truck with the low pro chassis under it. Um, we're working on that. The, uh, uh, you know, we got the, uh, firewall done working on the engine bay stuff. Now, um, the 66 truck with a spec chassis under it. I've had that for a while. LT4 eight speed truck that kind of, we didn't touch the paint on the outside. It was like a perfect restored truck on the outside and kind of did the crazy engine bay nice interior tuck the bumpers you know clean it up um there's a, another 66 gmc step side that's more of like a pro touring deal that we're doing just the metal work on um and i have a 61 flat roof that's my own car 61 palace laptop perfect like patina car that i kind of did like the fake 409 deal that has a 408 in it but it's like the fake 409 deal on it and that's like my uh my I guess next my personal next car that I'm been putting together nights and weekends stuff. Um, the project's kind of like I said, there's not a whole lot more going on in the projects because there's not enough hours in the day. But uh, that's kind of kind of where we're at right now. When are you looking to have that indie truck done? Uh, we were kind of pushing for SEMA, but I guess I kind of didn't realize how much how difficult it is to get parts right now. Yeah. So and, and how uh, quick SEMA creeps up on you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As long as you um, don't commit to a specific SEMA, you can still have it done for SEMA. Oh, yeah, yeah, just Same. SEMA. They do it every six months, every year. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Um, so I guess that's kind of pushed to the LSD debut this year, possibly. Okay. Um, you know, we're waiting on wheels, and Jeff, that owns the truck, actually does the paintwork himself. So um, he, he has, actually has a lot to do with the project as far as the assembly and everything like that. Um, you know, he's kind of like what it takes, what it takes, basically. Um, that truck, we kind of started started over with the low-pro chassis. We saved the bed, but everything else, we kind of started over again. I mean, it's still a legit any pace truck. Um, the bed kind of already had a bunch of work in it. And I, so, you know, we're, it had opening doors and everything. It still kind of showcases the chassis, but it's still actually raised. Um, you know, and we put that on and the bumpers tucked and that kind of deal. So it's really just once the engine bay and the trans tunnels finished up, it's kind of ready for like the final assembly state or like the, you know, the next paint stage. So it nice. should go relatively quickly here. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing that one for, you know, for the listeners out there, believe it or not, Josh was my sounding board when we first got the idea of doing an OBS chassis because I drove a 95 OBS pickup and High school was a Z71, you know, extended cab, but I don't, I don't know shit about him. And I know I wanted to reach out to the guy who I know knows the trucks and the truck scene really well. And I think it was like, dude, super beneficial to like get started that way because you gave us a ton of insight on, you know, what the trends were and what people were wanting and what some of the problems were. And I think that helped really shape a lot of that chassis, which it's oh. neat that you've now have the very first production one, seeing that that come together. I'm looking forward to seeing what you do because it's off to a great start, man. I mean, I've seen the pictures of it and already what you've done. It's That thing's going to be a, a killer build. Yeah, that thing is going to be cool. The Indy truck. I've always loved that livery paint scheme, whatever you want to call it. Wasn't it originally going to be left as is on the paint and body work? Uh, I don't think it was going to, it was gonna originally going to be like a quick and dirty kind of thing. Um, Jeff that owns a truck has a paint shop, so he's not really a patina or original paint guy. Gotcha. Um, so, but it was like, you know, originally a stock chassis deal and that stock chassis has its limitations. I mean, it's, you know, they only go so low the track with sucks on them, the steering sucks on them. 
Um, you know, so it was a pretty easy sell, like, hey, you're going to be lower and all these problems are going to fix this, be fixed as well. Um, so, I mean, that chassis is just insane. I mean, everybody that comes in the shop is like blown away, like with what's going on. And they're like, how does this work? And it, it'll be cool to see it done and like still see it kind of blow people's minds. I mean, it's like, so I guess it's unassuming, but it's like, it's just like, once you start staring at it, the more it gets. So like, that's, there's nothing out there. Like people have asked like why we use that chassis. Um, and it's, there's just nothing out there that's even close to it. Like there's nothing that has that engineering and that thought process into it. Like, it's like, you know, the Texas two link and throw some patrol arms on it, like in like a two by three backpack. It's like, it's like a whole nother level that unless you're in that game, I don't think you really get it. Like, yeah, I think some of that me not being in the game was beneficial because in looking at them and I know I reached out to you about that. I'm like, does anybody drive these? Like, do you, do they turn them do do or do you, wheels and tires? do you put like go jacks under them or jack the front up and then like move it or swing the back because they, they, do, they do like the skate thing where they just like you know drive with the wheels tucked and when they turn they gotta air it up and turn and then they air it back down yeah That's, i've seen so many pictures of like yeah. them hammered and rolling down the highway and it looks cool but like i want to be able to drive it low and that was a major undertaking for probably you know i don't know as of yet because it's a new product but for something that's not by any means one of the more popular chassis. It probably has some of the most advanced engineering in it out of like anything that we've done. And it was, that was a really challenging project to make it work. Steer, you know, ride height. Obviously the bed floor mod was, that was a huge, you know, undertaking from the engineering standpoint, but a yeah, very challenging, unassuming platform. For yeah. essentially a pickup truck yeah, chassis. Yeah, right. I mean, there's a lot. So we're hoping it takes off. Yeah, yeah. Somebody <laughs> like has got to start. Once that one's out there, people will realize how cool yeah. they are. <laughs> you know, we, I, we need guys like you to set the bar on the the truck builds. I feel like well, you said there's a the OBS world. Um, there's so many entry level builds or from an entry level price point, they just kind of get them done and get them on the road quick. But I think it takes a couple high end builds to to get everybody to notice because they're. They're badass trucks. I think they should have a huge following and a long life to them. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and we are doing a second one too. So we have a, the other low pro chassis in order for the SS 454 truck. Um, it'll be, you know, kind of in the same wheelhouse. We're going to put the 405 on the back of that one, which I'm thinking nice. is going to be interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it fits like, though. You know, I, it works know, on I, it. I know it fits. It's, uh, it's tight. Yeah. Um, when I was measuring the other one, um, but so we're, I mean, those two trucks, so they're going to be like, I guess, brother and sister kind of deal. You know, it's going to be like the Pace truck and the white SS 454 truck. Um, you know, both, you know, 22s, 24s, both, you know, 800 plus supercharged horsepower. So, um, yeah, we're going to have two pretty good examples for you guys here within the next year. Yeah, those are the two best That's, vehicles yeah. to do it with. Those are going to be cool. Do you think the OBS trucks are easier to build because they're newer and have so much other stuff figured out that you normally fight with on the older trucks? Uh, well, I kind of threw a wrench into that with like doing like the firewall and, you know, we're doing aftermarket air conditioning now. So um, that was it's its own deal. I think the advantage of those trucks is like panel fitment. Yeah. yeah. So windows, panel fitment, the way they seal. Right. Uh, those trucks are so more advanced over like the square body stuff. I mean, it's like night and day. I mean, the pins just, the doors just drop on and you're good. Um, you know, we didn't really didn't do much to the outside of that truck, just kind of clean up the bumper fitment on it. Um, they really don't need until you get to the interior. That's where it goes south. Those interior panels oh, and trying to find replacement, panels, and everything cracking. just breaks instantly when you touch it. Jeff that owns the Indy truck is like hoarding like any NOS parts he can find. Like he probably has enough to build like four trucks right now. So <laughs> I think we'll be all right. Yeah. yeah, I've noticed that with that truck, like you said, Phil, that's a that's a good question because it's it seems like it's the last it's the perfect year. It's advanced enough where it's like easier to put together than the square bodies, but not advanced too much like the next generation where it'd be a pain in the ass to to tear one down and put it back together. They're just enough engineering. Just it's still old. Yeah, but it's still kind of like an old yeah. truck. I mean, yeah. the stuff's so simple. But then they get into the plastic era of all the interior with shit that you can't 
well done modified touch right. look at without it, breaking. As soon as you open it and snap it, it's it's done forever. That's yeah. the way it was. I mean, that on that two door Tahoe, I was doing you know the outside like you could tear the whole front end off, you know, in a long afternoon. You know, oh, yeah. but pulling the center console and putting a radio in it, you know, as soon as it dash and the, all that breaks apart and you know right. it's, that it's just. It never goes back together the way it was. That was a really nice truck. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah, yanking, user the, error. yanking the <laughs> dash apart on mine back in, like, I don't know, 99, putting a double in, yep. in there. And that was, that was a challenge back yeah. then. My skill set's advanced a little bit since then, but that was, a, that was tricky. Oh, man. Um, so you're thinking Lone Star Throwdown for the, for the Indy truck then, right? Yeah, I believe that's the that's been the new the new goal set is Lone Star Turnaround. I mean, if it's close enough for SEMA, we'll push it. But SEMA is like a hundred days away, I think, at this point. So, damn, I don't damn. think that's realistic. That's, yeah, <laughs> I gotta get, I gotta get back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Where do you see the industry going? What trends are you following? What do you think's taking off? Where do you want to see it go? Uh, I think it's more user friendly trucks or more user friendly vehicles, I guess I should say. Um, you know, like people want to use their stuff now. I don't think it's as much as the show queen kind of stuff. Um, you know, I see a lot of people like actually doing like you guys are doing with the survivor series builds and, and that kind of deal. Um, you know, I'm a little bit into the drag racing side of it and the radial tire racing stuff. Um, like the, actual like the drag and drive events have gotten huge like drag week has kind of spawned off into like you know five or ten other events now um so these guys are building race cars or street cars i guess then they're driving a thousand eight hundred miles um i think you know with evolution of parts and um you know technology i think these cars are being more usable um and more you know not trailer queens i guess you could say i mean i've kind of always been an advocate of actually driving your shit is kind of what I said a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think everybody should do that no matter how much. I mean, it's not my investment, I guess, but I mean, if it's a $500,000 car, I still think you should drive it and use it. Um, I think that's kind of the way it's going. Um, you know, I think the big wheel stuff might die out a little bit and go back to the smaller wheel or smaller diameter. I think we're kind of topped out at the big wheels. Um, beyond that, I think it's just going to be, you know, embracing the other parts and technology that comes available. Oh, I thought you had a follow up. No, I got, yeah. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was a fulfilling that was a, answer. I got everything. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, uh, well, we come to the part where we start asking the standard questions. And I think some of these are going to be pretty fun, especially knowing what we know about Josh. Yeah. Uh, what is, uh, your favorite car movie? And why? Um, Days of Thunder is probably like an OG, like my top of the line movie. I would say. Um, I, I don't. I think it was just the era, or maybe the era I grew up in, or you know, watching like old school NASCAR. I mean, we, my dad and I would watch, you know, like the Dale Earnhardt era. I guess back when it was back when they were men. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, you know, that's probably probably the top favorite. I would say. I mean, I, I hate to say it, but I think like the Fast and Furious original movie did a lot for like the Turbo LS world, I think. I think a lot of those guys that like were into the Honda stuff kind of moved into the Turbo like LS stuff. And I don't know if it'd be as advanced as it was today if it maybe wasn't for that movie. I mean, they kind of jumped the shark on the rest of them, but I mean, the, the first original one, um, those are probably... I, I don't say I don't watch like Fast and Furious like every day or every month or every year. <laughs> you still do live your life one quarter mile at a time, though, don't you? No, nothing else matters. And I do wheelies, <laughs> <laughs> wheelies <laughs> while doing burnouts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, yeah, that that car. All you know, kidding aside, that fucking Charger was badass. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I drive that thing. Oh yeah, if you could stand on the bumper everywhere you went, I mean, that's yeah, while cool. doing burnouts. Yeah, while doing burnouts <laughs> and sixteen speed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was the first car you owned and a good story about that car? So the, the 90 S Blazer was the first car I had when I was like 16. Um, 
so my dad would never V8 swap it because he was kind of like afraid of what I would do, I guess, with it. Your dad didn't think you could handle a V8, huh? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I, it was like he, he thought the V6 was, was enough. <laughs> Eventually, at one time, we built the V6 even more, like, you know, because, you know, they're too short of a, of a like a Vortec V8. So all the pistons and rods and yeah, everything are the same. Say actually built that motor a little bit more at one point in time um i don't have like a great story i did a lot of stupid stuff in it I those things say. i like those vehicles they're lindsay head they're roomier in in there than you think yeah. they they got enough yeah room to get down yeah <laughs> really <laughs> yeah they do sounds yeah. like somebody's got a story <laughs> i got a few stories about if josh those. doesn't if this josh doesn't have a story this one i never i never there. owned one i had a, had a girlfriend that had one so yeah yeah poor choice I know I've got a daughter. She's about to go to college. I would she, never get her a small SUV. I know. <laughs> you remember the paint can story with Phil? Yeah. Back of that? Is that something <laughs> worth sharing or is that That's just... pretty solid. Dude, so Lindsay, <laughs> you know, back then, I grew up with my wife. You know, we weren't really, like, friends at back then. But somehow, I ended up in her blazer, right? She had a four-door version. I mean, what, what was that? was, like, early 90s. My buddy, Fen, is in the back seat. You know, I don't know if it's like junior year, senior year, something like that. Well, you know, we got on this kick of like pegging street signs with hmm. things down in Mexico. Okay. Right? <laughs> so that, like anything else, that's, that's the evolution of like the hobby. You're blazing, that, you're, you're buying, you're doing what with street signs? And explain what. There's so a lot of people like, out there this, that yeah. haven't lived this <laughs> so life this, that this, don't know what right. you're so talking about. So this starts with like a like a hostess cherry pie, maybe. Okay. You're cruising down a street, so it starts at like 30, and then it goes to like 60, and, and you just, you know, you kind of loft that thing out, and you hit street sign, and it makes like fireworks. It's, then you go back and see, yeah, and you, and you see what your work is, you know, <laughs> what you did. So that, obviously, evolution comes to like... Throw anything you can yes, out of car window. Heavier, bigger things, right? So... You're going to parties like house parties in high school and you know, you're in the garage and you see some like gallon paint cans man I, that i wonder what would happen if you you know two high school kids putting their heads together had a, <laughs> had a couple of you know had a couple of mike's hard lemonades in us or something <laughs> next thing you know we got a white paint can my buddy fens in the back seat and i'm like dude fucking chuck it man hit, hit that street sign so we start cruising i'm in the passenger seat up front Lindsay's driving he's in the back seat and he leans out the window and I hear like direct hit, you know, and if you could imagine like 60 yeah. miles an hour, what that sounds like. Well, I thought he was going to miss. So I had her like really favor the street sign super close. <laughs> it goes dead silent. And then I look in the back seat and the entire back seat is white. He's white <laughs> head, head to waist, completely white. The entire side of the car is white. So I spent like the whole next day. I was like undercoating the wheelhouses of the car, and, like <laughs> clay bars, full detail, <laughs> yeah, full detail, and the whole interior. I mean, the interior is just wrecked on this thing. But man, it, the sound is just exhilarating. You know? <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm glad we. So, what's yeah, your yeah, cool yeah, story yeah. about your <laughs> I, I just did a lot of stupid <laughs> stuff with burnouts and donuts and. And that kind of stuff. I mean, the mall parking lots. Uh, we would like hang out in the mall a lot. I'm pretty sure, like, they had my picture, like, on the security truck from the stupid shit we would do, just you know, drifting around light poles, and we would drag race like across the back of the mall parking lot, like it was like a four lane kind of deal. So that kind of stuff, like the blazer didn't run that great. But, like it would hit like second gear, like no other, like we put a shift <laughs> kit in it. So it would like hit second gear to the point, like it would like change a lane or like almost pull the tires off the ground. It felt like, um, <laughs> I mean, that's like stupid fun with that, with See, that stuff. It sounds like you had a B&M shift kit in that thing. Huh? <laughs> and a ratchet shifter. Oh, as, as well. so, damn. You, nice. you could really, really get into that. Yeah. <laughs> What's uh what's the trickiest build that you've ever been a part of? Tricky. I think they're all tricky at some level, I think. I mean the I guess the more moving parts, the more complicated it is. Um the Pontiac was tricky because we chopped the roof on it, it was a convertible. So like when you like we only chopped the roof on that like three quarters of an inch on that car. So there was like I think I counted like forty seven pieces of stainless that needed shortened that three quarters of an inch as well. Oh. 
So that was that was pretty tricky. Um, I mean, they they all have their own issues. Anytime you put a coyote in something, it's a pain in the ass. I mean, it, they're huge, especially in a Mustang with a Pro Charger. Um, they all have their own own deals, their own issues. Wildest SEMA story. SEMA story. I knew you were going to ask this, too. <laughs> Josh is usually a mellow guy, you know? Sorry. Yeah, I mean, we've had some pretty interesting <laughs> nights and cab rides and limos and drag racing and burnouts. Um, probably the most memorable time in, like, SEMA story, SEMA-related story, is, like, the probably in the heyday of the Optima deal, like, before it got, like, full-blown race car. Um, you know, I think part of like when we were going to Pahrump, I think we were driving like the shop Camaro, Fritz and I were driving the shop Camaro and we had to like, you got like an additional like road rally points, I guess, if you got a picture with Elvis. So like you're ripping around Vegas in like a 69 Camaro trying to find Elvis or find an Elvis. Um, you know, I, I think at one point in time we drove around for hours and pretty much just gave up. I think we were rolling in front of the, the Bellagio. And Fritz is like, pull over, pull over, pull over. So we pull over like right in front of the fountains of the Bellagio. And there was a black Elvis there in a red suit for, th- for that. So, I mean, just that, I mean, it was like kind of like a SEMA, like car story deal. But that's probably one of the more memorable times or the memories, I think, of that. It was just like fun just driving around like Vegas in an old car and just being a idiot. I think it's, it's what we were doing. So that's probably uh, one of the ones I could I guess talk about. I'm discuss. surprised you guys didn't kidnap his ass. Is that, like, no. like, like, how much? How many points do I get if I bring it? <laughs> yeah. I need a picture. Hey, you just like sock him in like the back <laughs> of the neck. It'll put him out. Put him in the back seat. Driving around SEMA though, in in like a hot rod muscle car, it's pro cool. touring something. There's all. It's just. It's you're like you're doing something you're not supposed to do, but yeah. you're just driving. You feel like a badass. It's yeah. so. It's. I don't know why. Right there in that area, it's just driving. It's just a different experience. It is. It's yeah. It's surreal. It's. I've never understood why Dude, because you're that, just driving a car. We like, did that in the green Chevelle. We had brand new sport cup tires on it. We're yeah. heading out oh, to Pahrump and I'm like, a little yeah. slick. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going around like the very first intersection <laughs> go to turn that thing. Like, I mean, about did a 180. and I'm like, Whoa, you know, low speed stuff. But I'm like, Oh, the fucker got away from me. I almost pulled a Tim. There. <laughs> <laughs> What's a Tim? Is that when you lose it? Tim is when you buy a brand new GT for, well, not brand new, like a, Oh, what's that? 08? 05. 05, 08. And you loop that fucker out in your cul-de-sac or right by your house because you've got old tires. <laughs> At that's, low speeds, that's going to take over the Miata story. It I will. think it's yeah, like I the think second Tim, or third Tim's time we've going to bring up. us a lot of enjoyment out of that's that's one. I <laughs> yep. wish I would have seen that to see the look on his face of just sheer terror. I bet you there's a traffic cam somewhere that's got it. We have to get on that. Yeah. Uh. Next up, what is in your pocket right now? You got to do a pocket dump. So, bead roller dies. I don't know, bead roller. <laughs> so, so it's funny about the bead roller. I've been trying to back off the whole bead roller thing because, you know, I've, I do believe it's like played out, but um, onto the pocket thing. So, I got Sharpie, cell phone. I have a knife, James brand knife. Oh, yeah. Ooh, cool. Wallets. Oh, what are you rocking for the wallet? Looks like a ridge, doesn't it? It's a ridge, and I got truck keys with you know the you gotta have the four way pocket screwdriver. Nice. Toolbox keys. The go fuck yourself. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you work basically by yourself, and you're still locking your toolbox. Uh, is, no, it, is, just, is it a bad neighborhood or what's <laughs> going on? It's like, a, it's like a habit thing, it's, you know. I don't. I don't it's just kind yeah. of fun there. <laughs> nice. They're really just shop keys, but uh, I don't have anything else interesting in my pockets. So that is what is in my pockets. How do you like that Ridge wallet? Uh, the Ridge wallet? Um, so I like it. I don't like how you have to fold the money like three times, I guess. Um, otherwise, it's pretty good. I mean, most like the knife and the wallet are all gifts for my wife or my kids at one point in time. Cause I'm not like super into that stuff, but you know, I, I did get out of like the bills, like the buy fold wallet. So, um, the, the wallet seems to work well. I mean, aside from that. So I got some good advice on that. Well, actually from Mike Wagner, 
because he's rocking it. Okay. Don't put your ID on the like the top because it will just wear the ever living shit out oh, of your really? picture and everything. So maybe put like I don't know, like your your good guys membership card <laughs> on the front because that <laughs> is, sleeve. that's useless anyway. Every time you try to hand it to somebody, they're like, "What? The, where's your ticket? Membership means yeah. there is no membership." <laughs> Wear the mustache off. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Where are you? Uh, where are you going next? What shows are you going to? Uh, Columbus. We the guys Columbus. Um, I don't do, I guess, a lot of shows. A lot of like, pretty much all of my growth right now in the business has been just word of mouth and social media stuff. Um, you know, for me, the time is too valuable to be out of the shop to do the shows and. You know, the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, get home early Monday morning deal. Um, so, you know, we'll be at Columbus. I've been playing around with the deal of doing the Dino's get down deal. Um, Dino's kind of supported me pretty largely from the from the beginning. So I'd like to possibly debut the 66, the blue 66 out there at his show. Phil, you went out there last year. Yeah, that was a really cool show. A lot different vibe than the regular good guy shows that we go to. Um, super laid back. So he's just moved to a new venue. Did he? I didn't see that. Yeah, they just announced. I think they're moving to the uh, Cardinal Stadium. Yeah. Um, Damn, so that's getting big. Yeah. He was just announcing it the other day, I think, something moving to a new venue. Yep. We might have to do that one. You said it was really good. It's yeah. real fun. Steve, yeah, I think like it's badass patina trucks everywhere. It was, that's right up your alley. Right up my alley. Yep. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, man, I look forward to seeing you out at Columbus. You're going to have to. Check out this good guy's truck. We're debuting that uh, OBS, so it's our yeah. first crack at it. So, you know, I'm, I'm open for critiques. Uh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm nervous for you to see it. <laughs> <laughs> but it should be cool. I'm sure it'll be awesome. I'm sure it's badass. I don't, I don't think there's anything you've uh, failed on, I guess, in my opinion. I mean, I don't like any build ever. I mean, you're always pushing the envelope, I think. I mean, that's, I don't know how you continue to come up with the ideas you come up with, and that's just, you're, you're always pushing or doing something different. Like, it's, well, it's pretty it. awesome. Just a good team, man. That's a awesome team. You obviously haven't seen the lobster car. Shut, have, you shut your mouth. I have seen the lobster car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, he did see it because it was out in fucking Pennsylvania is where we had it done. Oh, I, I was there <laughs> for the lobster yeah. car. Dude, the lobster <laughs> cars, that's like the one thing, like, if I ever, like, you, you look at these, like, presidential candidates that come up and they find that one thing from like the, their deepest secretive past. That's the fucking lobster car with us. Eh, I've seen your Google search history. I think there's a lot more there. <laughs> yeah. You've seen that? The lobster car. The lobster <laughs> yeah. car is nothing. You, you've seen, you're totally fine with the lobster car. The lobster car <laughs> will be the mural though at the back of, of your ceremony. Like it'll be casket. When I go. And then we paint the casket like a lobster. Oh, was, was you know be cool? I wonder if we could get that same guy that painted, I forget his name, but he was an awesome airbrush artist. He could Dave. airbrush, yeah, Dave, he could airbrush Josh and Phil, the two of you guys, fucking yourselves. <laughs> you, can, <laughs> you can go fuck yourselves and he can airbrush it. Huh. That'd be cool. Both of us do it. Lay that out for me. What? <laughs> I don't think we need to go there. I mean, you're pretty creative, you're yeah, visual. If it was just me, I could understand or just Phil, yeah. but both of us together. It's tandem. Like, it's not you guys. Like, like Phil's over here. Okay, you're over so here. Not, oh, hey, you have nothing to do with one another. It's oh, okay. Like you'd be on the hood. I'd be in the trunk for the Oh, I'd be fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> was there not a live lobster involved when that car was painted? Was there not a lobster? I think, the, yeah, that, the, Dave, dude, actually bought a lobster, if I remember. <laughs> Well, I mean, Jeremy was really passionate about it. He wanted to make sure that it was was lifelike for the details. So, yes, it was yeah. absolutely the it, passion it was, project. I thought that was so. going to be the transition from like the pro touring to like pro aquatics. You know, it was, <laughs> it, pro touring was running for a long time. I was looking for the next but trend. What about animals? <laughs> yeah. Pro crustacean. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Who doesn't like lobsters? Just Good maybe point. maybe they don't need to be cars. It should drive them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we, I look forward to hanging out with you in uh, Columbus. We'll have to grab some, grab a few beers. If you're not a whiskey guy, we're going to bring some whiskey to to get you into it. All right, okay. yeah, we're going to peer pressure you. Sweet. Look forward to seeing you, man. Appreciate right. you coming on. Yeah, man. It was awesome catching Thanks. up, dude. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Absolutely.
Big thanks again to Josh Hart. Remember, you can check out more about Josh and his work on Instagram at Hart underscore Fab and at Hart dash Fab dot com. Coming up next, a brand new segment. We're going to break down some of our new favorite pieces of gear in the glove box. All right, it's time for the glove box where we tell you about some of our new cool gear, guns, EDC shit, whiskey, and other stuff that we're into. This in the glove box segment is brought to you by Blade HQ. Whether you're into cars, motorcycles, hunting, fishing, grilling, or any number of things, you've got the tools that you swear by. Have you ever noticed that the tool that finds its way into every job is a knife? Do you have the knife that you swear by? If not, it's time you got yourself one. And Blade HQ is the place to get it. They've got knives to fit any hand, any belt, any job, and any budget. Any pants? What's that supposed to mean? Like small, tighter pants that you wear. Oh, you just get like a smaller knife? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Just letting you know. Got it. (laughs) Just go to bladehq.com slash oil and whiskey to shop their selection of knives. And I think here shortly we might have a special, maybe like a discount code, maybe like a special oil and oil and whiskey edition section of knives. Let me do a something. curated one. I think so. Yeah, we All got the stuff that, that we like. Jeremy's we picks, use. Josh's picks, Phil's picks. We can see who sells the most. Or just the RS oh, night, man. I'm sick of I'm, I'm sick of trying to like find the closest like color palette or the thing that best represents the roadster shop and call it the RS knife. I'd rather it just like actually be the roadster the shop knife. knife. You know Some people saying? don't like blue. Yeah, they're wrong. Yeah. Blue's, I am you know, hey, just saying. Blue's nice. Blue is nice. <laughs> It, it's nice. It's a nice fucking color. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> uh, but so, no. we, hold on. What? I know, we're, oh, I know we're throwing, to, Are you throwing a curveball at us? I am. What do you got? I know we're supposed to do the glove box right now, but, but I'm almost finished with my drink. Oh, boy. I've got I've got everybody something. Oh, <laughs> Josh's. Josh's it's drink. Cocktail. <laughs> Josh's. Josh's cocktail. All right. I'm excited. You are excited. Dude, I'm excited. You you have all these fresh ingredients. We do. This is going to quite us. the presentation. This is a uh this it, is a bourbon. Drink's going to suck, but it looks really pretty. Are you I'm done? not wrong. No. Nobody said yeah, anything bad about yeah, your drink when you made it. That's no, all you did was trash talk. No, we didn't. We, we just I we trash talked a little bit of like the preparation, but there we was didn't no say preparation. Anything bad about it. You're being really hurtful. Yeah. It's you need mean, to, you're you're mean spirited yeah. is what you are. I think we should encourage him, give him the best chance that he possibly can to come in second or third place. You know, I appreciate it. Yeah. So go um, ahead, Josh. Tell so us what you got. This is a bourbon peach smash. If you would help me, Jeremy, could you do yes, ice? Sir. Well, our, how how much ice would you like? Uh, go ahead and fill that baby right up. right to the top. Yep. This it. is a for each and every uh, each and every class. participant. Yeah. This is a this is a summer drink, so you're gonna need that ice. So, ingredients that we have, right? We have Stillhouse peach tea whiskey. We have Stillhouse black bourbon. We have some simple syrup. We have peaches, and we have mint. All right. We've got a full diced peach. All that's gonna go right there. Look at you, right there in inside. Right. I'm missing the. You definitely presentation. won on presentation. I'm missing the presentation by. It, I'd stop getting all this the ice. ice out of here. So you then we're gonna do. The worst job. We're gonna do about five, six, seven, big, large mint leaves. Okay. Then we're gonna do. That one goes in Phil's glass. Oh, oh, oh all down. Oh. I'm gonna have to turn this over here. There. No, I guess I'm just this is, that's I was trying I was to be say. all professional yeah. and do it, you know. Just get all that water in there, too. Yeah, water that sucker down a little bit. Gonna, drink's going to need it. There. We're going to do... Uh, Kick that water back in there. About, a, about two ounces of uh, simple syrup. Isn't a shot two ounces? This is an a ounce, ounce and a pool. half on, one, on this side and one ounce on this side. So yeah, sure. I did ounce and a half and about a little less. So I just did two ounces. Uh, I I unfortunately forgot the muddler. So here we go with the plastic spoon again. Yeah, we're just gonna do the plastic here, spoon here is becoming a steeple of do, the why don't you drink. Do me a little do me a little muddling. Dude, every, while I'm for this. Everything that you've fallen short of, you give to me. The shitty little ice fucking tongs. The, and now the lack of a muddler. The tongs didn't work? 
Yeah. Well, he's yeah, he's, he's going to give you a drink that he's drastically going to fall short on as well. So me, get ready for that. Let me muddle this up to the best of my abilities with the end of this spoon. This is not working, Josh. All right, that's good. That's all I needed. It's not muddled. It's not muddling at all. How much? How much is it's it a muddled? subtle muddle? Let's try. Let's try to smash it up. We don't need a lot of muddling. It'll make the mint bitter. It's so just light muddle. What, this You're really, such a prima. We're not even really remotely muddling it. I'm basically just moving peaches around. I think it's key. They say to make eye contact, right? Like, yeah, and oh, kick your head just peaches. a little. We put that back all right, that's muddled all right. enough. All right, so where are we at? All right, so we've got our peaches, our simple syrup, and our mint, right? Now, that is an ounce and a half of Stillhouse Black Bourbon. That's about another ish ounce and a half, right? To three ounces. So I didn't know we were oh. going to be mixing the using multiple Stillhouse. Well, this drink calls for bourbon. Okay. Right? Josh sets so, the rules and then he cheats. I see. No. You didn't know about that, did you? I did not. You, I thought we were limited to our just, selection. You have to use this, but you can use anything else along with it. Then hmm. we're going to do even. Another three ounces. So one to one. Yeah, one to one. Another three ounces on the peach tea. Okay. Now we're going to give that a shake. We're going to give this a shake. I was hoping you'd forget to put the top on. I don't think this seals up very good. <laughs> it's a good thing you're not a bartender. <laughs> Why? I, it's just tough to watch you do it's that. It's off-putting. Yeah, it's... <laughs> is it uncomfortable? It is. If I would walk out of the bar right now and not pay you for the cocktail if you were my server. But you're a male, female. Once I make that solid eye contact, that's tips. be baby. running. Tips. Yeah. Oh, one. Tips because they think there's something wrong with you. <laughs> it's like the oh, mercy it's... tip. Like there's something severely wrong with this guy. Yeah, those peaches went flying everywhere and I've got sticky stuff all over my chair. Good coloring. Yeah. Is there a garnish to go with this? Phil, if you're going to do something, do it right. Bam. Oh. Let's turn that one around. Gentlemen. I feel like this is one of those like European couches that looks super fancy and is incredibly uncomfortable to sit on. <laughs> <laughs> That's the it's a good analogy. That's the Stillhouse Peach Bourbon Smash. That's what you're calling it. That's what I'm calling it. So Peach Bourbon Smash. You basically just Googled that and swiped a recipe because a bourbon Peach Bourbon Smash is like a pretty mainstay cocktail. Completely different recipe. Okay, though. let's see how you did. Ready? Smells good. I think my wife would really enjoy this. Dude, what? what did you I forget? forgot the main ingredient. What? Damn. Damn. You can't go back now. Yeah. I feel like it's the cocktail. It's done. been yeah. It's been presented. The judges ruled. Well, he's out of there. <laughs> Give me a little finger in there. Come on. Big finger. Put it back. Just move. what? I'm just organizing things. Dude, it's a mess over here. Here we you go. Fuck with your presentation. Yeah. What'd you put in it? Just my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's supposed to have a it's supposed to have a ginger beer. Oh. Yeah. All right. So this is like a nice, easy cocktail. I thought that, I thought it was gonna be a little spirit forward, but it's Should a, they this have is gone... a good summer Ooh. cocktail. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a proper Just stir. A little, little dash of little dash of ginger beer. Yeah, Need it takes up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Now we got something. I want to hate it. I really yeah. do. So I'm not going to give you a good review, but <laughs> it's pretty good. A little sweet. Probably could back down off the simple syrup just a little bit. 
But I tell you that peach tea whiskey, it really comes through. Yep. I like it. I you don't do love like it. it. It you know, I'm I'm more of a I'm a I'm a spirit forward cocktail right. kind of guy. Right. It's very sweet, but he's the type of guy. Yeah, I'm the yeah. I'm the kind of guy that it's good, dude. I'm yeah. Check that out. Bourbon. Give me like a, a half ounce of that in there. Like a little floater. There you go. Hey, you learned how to pour. Pour from the side like a like an oil can. That's what I did. Yeah. That's so good. So right now, I would say he's a solidly in second place. Yeah, consider like if you you guys know I'm gonna win it, so a that, little that, more bourbon in it, that, actually. It does. Yeah. Kicks it up bourbon. a notch. Probably could go... I go two to one. Could go to two yeah, to one. Could go two to one on the bourbon. And that you, peach you, tea you've strong. got yourself something there. I'm a fan, dude. Nicely done. It's a nice summer drink. It's it is. Phenomenal preparation. Presentation. Sorry. Yeah, pre the presentation was good. The preparation was awful. Yeah. <laughs> it was full of errors and just... It was, yeah. full, no, it was one error. I forgot the, 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 forgot the ginger beer. It was base. It was a train wreck. Dude, just to be honest. The finish. You pulled it together. You pulled it together, and it's good. When are you ever going to be a nice person? Never. Probably <laughs> never. Dude. That's somebody's got to. Somebody's got to. That's an answer. Keep you in check. That's what I needed. I'll be honest. What? I'm always going to bust your balls, like forever. Forever. Yeah. Forever. That's <laughs> not even that long for you, dude. It's like <laughs> it's not that much longer to live forever. <laughs> oh, so iron sharpens iron. So, yeah, I gave you a compliment, dude. It's a good cocktail. Thanks to Stillhouse, that's the entry. You're gonna have to bring it. It's up to you now. I'm next week. I'm whenever you're ready. Me. Whenever you think you're ready to bring it, bring it. I'm gonna have to spend a little time. I, uh, honestly, I haven't started uh, exploring uh, what my cocktail is gonna be, but now that I know that we can incorporate the black bourbon, I didn't either. I did this about an hour ago. Okay. It's good. It's good. You've after been practicing it. for months, months and months and months. All right, back to the glove box. Back to it. First up, what do we have in our pockets? Who wants to go first? I think you should go first this week. In my pockets this week, I don't. I've had very little. I got my wallet. Um, I did select a new knife prior to recording. Um, been rocking that Boker Plus with the gold Tonto blade. Really like that knife a lot. Um, change it up and going with the Wii. This is the Wii Banter. This is the another natural G10. Um, not an auto, just a flipper. Uh, frame lock. Nice little smaller knife. We we yeah. and Civivi just have the, the best. They've action. got good action. Good action, good price point. That knife, the blade style, the length, the shape on that reminds me of, I'm going to call it a body shot blade. Does everything. You know how like anytime like when there's something going on or like, oh, what's going on here? You grab your pocket knife and you start like you know digging into it. Digging into it. And the knife's already like massacred. Like you know, you, that's a traditional fatter drop point. Exactly. That's a traditional yeah. blade that's been on knives for that's ever, good so. knife. It looks like a good carry. Well, we're gonna see. Body Do they actually guys. glow in the dark? I don't it think it looks so. like it should glow in the dark. You tried it in your basement with the black lights on? I don't have any black lights. Bullshit. No, I don't think it glows in the dark. Okay. I think it's just the natural color of G10. But, hey, new... Cool looking knife. New selection for this week. What do you have in your pockets, Jeremy? Just a second. I'm just sipping on this wonderful cocktail that you created. Oh, you're so nice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what do we got? We got, uh, got some keys. Keys with that. There's that. Yeah. You got one of those? That's where you want to go with that? Yeah. <laughs> Who was there the other day? Yeah. I think ours were used I'm just going to put yeah. those back in my pocket. <laughs> okay. Be the best thing. In the other pocket, what do we have here? Something new, fellas. Feast your eyes on that. Ooh. Yeah. And take a, a look. sleeper here. Yeah, He's yeah, bringing something to the table. I saw the little orange poking out of your pocket well, earlier. Look at the other side of it. You got a Shinola knife on I you. I sure do. I believe it's pronounced Ooh, sh Shinola. It is, is Shinola. It? Yeah, I've always pronounced it Shinola yeah. as well. But uh, this is a super cool little blade that uh, it was a Father's Day gift oh. from my wife. Um, it's in Father's Day this weekend? Yeah, but she, if she, when she buys something, she gets like super antsy to give it to me. So she had it. 
I'd like and to take a you. look at that. I got you pleasant see. clock radio. Yeah, I get you pleasant this clock radio. <laughs> that is a that's a uh, cool cool knife. I mean, Shinola has some great products, watches, bags. I've got a bunch of their stuff. It's a benchmade. Yeah, it well, is. it is a benchmade knife, and it is uh, you know like a limited edition type thing. But the colors, yeah, the carbon. carbon it's got a lot going for it. It's big though. I mean, that's you could skin a fucking deer with that thing. That is a that's a besiesta of a knife, as they you say. You could skin a fucking bear. That's yeah. A, oh yeah. Tell you what, that's a that's, that's a, one for self defense. That's a, that's a fighting knife. Yeah. I won't. I won't fuck with you. I like that. Yeah. So I was I like that, that orange lot. backer. Is Very cool. cool. It's it, it's the little things, you know. Little orange backer it takes the, it up and not. Yeah, little, little the nicer. anodized wash washer on it, but uh, yeah, pretty cool. Your wife's so sweet. From your from your kids and your wife, a little yeah. Father's Day present. Which every one of these, it gets like more and more difficult to tell my son that he can't have a pocket knife. He and can have. One, well, he can have one. At one age, this isn't a, kind of a good you know, conversation. At what age is the appropriate age for? A pocket knife. How old is Wyatt? Eleven. Well, we bought him one for his birthday, so. <laughs> okay. Eleven. So, so eleven. <laughs> right, so there you go. <laughs> is this going to come out before he receives it? Probably oh, yeah. not. Okay. Good. Yeah, like uh, once a week. I, guess. I mean, he's got inventory of like all the knives that I have. It's, he just got to learn responsibility. Yeah. It's better than the Swiss Army knife days, though, because at least these. They've got take locking. A finger off. They've got locking mechanisms, but you're not like forcing the thing. But did you not? I sliced the shit. I cut yeah. basically yeah. a finger I know, off but with this, the Swiss Is Army that knife not what taught you to respect knives? As soon as you're cutting something, yeah. that thing folds over across the top. Oh, I can remember. <laughs> I can like vividly remember going in my dad's drawer. Remember the upper the, top yeah. drawer he had? He had that. There's that Swiss Army knife that was as thick as a fucking encyclopedia. You know, in a it was leather a Guinness Book of World Records. Exactly. <laughs> And you'd take that sucker out when nobody was home and like start, and then you, you're trying to close it and it takes as much effort to close it. And that's when you catch a fingertip. Here's a true story. You get the wood saw and just. Yeah. True story. Never been told before ever, ever. Nobody knows I'm this. I'm looking forward to hearing yeah. this. Young, young boy. I was probably about seven or eight years old. A young Josh. Still, Henning. still lived down in Fort Lauderdale. I remember dropping a GI Joe down in the couch, right? This is in the couch? Days. In the couch. That's where it was. Down in the couch and cushions. Hmm. This is an old school, like uh, remember the plastic old, action was figure. It, no, was the, it Sergeant Slaughter? No, I think it was. <laughs> okay. uh, it was one. Uh, it was a GI Joe. I don't remember okay. the actual GI Joe. This is like an old burlap style uh, plaid couch. Right. This is sure. way back in the day. So in it drops 1800s. down, but it drops down past the cushions in the back part, like past that wood brace in the Ooh, couch. Down there in no man's in land. no man's land. Yeah. Right. Little Josh, little eight year old Josh, needed that GI Joe. I knew <laughs> I, get there? I knew where my dad's Swiss Army knife was. I knew that I could get to the back of the couch. So I got to the back, I went and got the Swiss Army knife, got to the back of the couch. I could feel him down on the, the outside of the couch, down on the bottom. So I go to cut the back of the couch out. It's up against the wall, so like sure. <laughs> nobody whoever moves the couch besides yeah. me to get my GI Joe. Can't I can't imagine there's another way of getting at it. So <laughs> no. So I'm cutting, I'm eight years old. So I'm cutting the back of the couch. I'm going to make a small incision, incision about this thing, sure. right? So right. I'm going to make a flap. Discreet. I'm smart enough to know that I just need to make a flap to open it and then glue put it back the together. I'm all the way around about the last cut and that thing folds over. On, uh, on oh, the top uh, over of, the top? Over the top Ooh. of my fingers, right? <laughs> so now it's hold it tight, right? Because if you hold it tight, it won't bleed. Open it up. I, there's blood everywhere. There's blood all over the carpet. There's blood over the back of the couch. I get the GI Joe, right? I put everything back. It's perseverance. I'm, I'm holding it. I run, put the Swiss Army knife back up, right? And try to wipe up what I can wipe up, put everything back. So clean up, obviously told a lie about why my hand was cut, did whatever. This is about a year later we go to move, and it looks like it's a murder <laughs> scene. <back there. laughs> it looks like you hid a body in, in the gun affair. Yeah, and deny, Wound. deny, deny, deny. Hmm. Now I'm admitting it. At 42 years old, I cut the back hey, of the couch off. If your dad's listening to this, he's gonna be fucking pissed. I told that my mom passed, you know, a few months ago, so now I can tell it because if I would have told it when my mom was alive, <laughs> she'd be mad. All right, so sorry. That was my Swiss Army knife Good story. story. What do you got on your pockets, Phil? I've got uh, QSP Penguin D2. 
That's a mouthful. It is. It's a lot. Love cool that blade. Cool ass knife. Though. Cool blade. Love the color combo. Um, it's a bit on the heavy side because I've been carrying uh, the daily carry that I've been rocking for a while, the Benchmade Bailout, super lightweight. So a little off-putting, rocking something this heavy. It's It's got some heft to it. But pulls those basketball shorts down, doesn't it? It does. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> can't you ain't got the hops like he used to. <laughs> can't get net anymore. <laughs> you left the door open. Yeah, yeah, I got nothing. Um, really cool knife. Love the shape. Love the uh, the size. Um, color combo's badass. Super good action on it. Good blade shape. So. I was doing a little research on this one on Blade HQ's website before a couple days ago before coming on here so I can get uh, you know your level of knowledge and expertise on something. Oh, um, so what, this is a $38 knife. Are you looks, serious? Yeah, that looks it like looks a like, high like end I was assuming it'd be like $150, $200. Super well made. 38 bucks For that money, everybody needs to get them one. Yes. I might try but, this one out for a little while. On Blade HQ's website, Whoever does their suggested products or similar products should probably get a raise. It's the first website I've been on where, like, every time you click on something and you scroll down to, like, suggested products. It makes sense. Yeah, like it and should. it's all, like, cool stuff. You're like, oh, yeah, no, I see how that would go with this. So they do that same knife with a titanium scale with, like, a cool waffle pattern on it. Oh. So I think uh, that's going to be the next purchase. It'll lighten it up a little yeah. bit, add a little flavor. Yep. Uh, every other website that's like suggested product. Oh, you like knives? Yeah, you might also like, like this Hyundai's. sticker. <laughs> yeah, it's all stupid shit. Ooh, that yeah. That's no relevant. great action. I don't mind. See, I don't mind the weight. I know. I'm with you. I like that knife a lot. Yeah. I'm glad that's, you don't cool. like it. I wanted to like it a lot more than I do. If it wasn't so heavy, I would be stealing it. Yeah, you just got to get bigger arms. I don't think that's a problem yeah. based on our last competition. Um, oh, so <laughs> hey, we can recheck that because that's another thing that I'm packing. <laughs> still rocking. Are you at the point you want to remeasure? No, I'm still rocking that little tape. No, that's not what I asked. No, nah, probably not. I'm just I'm coming off of like a week bender from just punishing my liver on vacation. <laughs> but and, you were at the gym every day. Yeah, it's five days. On Instagram, he was at the gym no, every day. Dude, Same picture. Yeah, he just brought the, like five pairs of shorts. Dude, the first <laughs> five days. That was, and then, you know, Bloody Mary is a little better in the morning than <laughs> driving all the way to the fucking gym. <laughs> uh, next up is what are we drinking? Well, obviously, we're drinking number one yeah. cocktail, bourbon peach smash. But As of right now, or until well, the next what, cocktail. What have, we been, what have we been drinking? We have been drinking Rock Hill Farms Single Barrel. Mm. I've wanted to try this one for a long, long time. Um, always see it on the internet, can never find it in the yeah. stores. That's a unicorn. Yep. It's, uh, it's up there on the super hard to find, super rare. Um, you got that? Yeah, big thanks to, to Garfield's. That was a uh, Garfield score. And uh, well, Dave I mean, always yeah. taking care of us. Dave hooked it up. And that is one as well that uh, I've always had my eye on it. Never been able to get my hands on it. But uh, that was worth the wait. Yeah, I'd say. Very good. We didn't ha I didn't have a lot. You know, we tried to. That's a it's, saver one. You want to yeah. exactly. Yeah. Usually we kill like three quarters of the bottle. That one we killed a quarter of the bottle. Yeah. So it's a very a, a much higher end bourbon, very hard to obtain. Yeah. And something that you certainly want to sip and savor. That's a first glass of bourbon. Bourbon. Yeah. Exactly. And then we find it something else. I was a huge fan. Um, oh yeah. It super I, thick and oily. Um Really good flavor, a little bit of burn, but I enjoyed it quite a bit. Yeah. I, I like it because as you're, it's one of those bourbons you're drinking and you're not really thinking about drinking it because it's not doing anything. Nothing uh, outrageous. Yes. I'm giving it an 8.5. It's pretty good. Going big. Where? And I'm trying to think of where we landed. We, I, need, I need the rating scale, Josh. It's been a while. You gotta get. You gotta go to the rating scale. I know. I like it. I like it a lot. I think I would take it over Blanton's. Oh, hundred percent. I'm gonna go oh, over yeah. the Elijah eight Elijah Craig eighteen year as I, well. I agree with that. Oh, the Elijah Craig eighteen wasn't. Uh, I didn't. I, really I didn't highly Elijah. review that though. I like it, but it, let me see where Blanton's we're at. was an eight five. 
Man, we're getting up there then. I'll mirror you with the 8.5 on that one. It's really good bourbon. Absolutely buy it. Seek it out if you can ever find it. If it's ever on the shelf, grab it. Yeah, oh, I would man. I would spend if you can afford it, I'd I'd spend a couple hundred bucks on it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm stepping that up from there just because of yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head with the Blanton's comment. I believe it's better than Blanton's. And I'm going I'm going eight six. I'm just gonna take it up a notch. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just make it a little nicer. And I'm gonna say the same thing. I mean, that's one I would I would scour the internet for that one. That's one I would I'd be looking on auction sites, Craigslist, forums, Facebook groups. It's something that you absolutely need in the collection. You you 100% need it on your yeah. shelf if you can find it. It's a conversation piece too. That one that one speaks to you, you know, and your <laughs> guests if it's sitting there. That's one of those that's like, "Oh, this guy fucking drinks some good ass bourbon." I think we got to do a little single barrel blind uh, taste test. That Maybe Elmer Lee, Blanton's. Hey, I'll tell you what. We I'd, can set it up. You know what else? Okay. I would I would slide. I think that's a good idea. And we need to slide that Stillhouse Black in there, too. Because I think that you're, you'd be surprised with those super high-end bourbons and sliding that in there. I think it's worth a, a blind taste test. All right. But that's our four. We're, we're going to do five. So we're, gonna, we're asking listeners right now, send us your suggestions of another bourbon to slide in for our blind taste test. We're going to do... The Elmer T. Lee is good Lee. compared. The, yeah. That's a very similar El, urban to that. Elmer T. Lee, Blanton's. Rock Hill Farms. Rock Hill Farms. Uh, Stillhouse Black Bourbon. And a fifth dark horse that the listeners are going to provide. So if you're listening, tell us a bourbon you want to throw in there. Not Jack Daniels, honey. Anything <laughs> other yeah, than Anybody that's, yeah. li- I mean, seriously, you know that. The, or the, the devil's cut. We're not drinking that <laughs> shit either. Uh, fireball (laughs) all right that does it for in the glove box but we got another installment of whiskey throttle i really like putting these together too i forgot one other thing i got in the glove box in my pockets what do you got turn that out give us some bunny ears oh boy go ahead go ahead (laughs) go ahead phil still got something else in his pocket i've got keys to a certain square body that I just got back the other day. What, what they square say? body would be? It's like a fucking rideshare program. If you love something, let it go. If it comes back to you, it was yours. Is that what they say? I think yeah. I've heard that somewhere. It was huh. meant to be. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So I just got my blue and white square body. 77 back. Matt pried it out of my hands. Uh, then he, uh, he got into Porsches a little bit. And we're building him a uh, Legends truck. Oh, the P cars. Let's say, say. <laughs> the P cars. I'm going to stab you. <laughs> so he hit me up that he's going to get rid of it, and he can either give it back to me for what I sold it to him, or he's going to sell it and make a small fortune on it. So, What a nice guy. Yeah, it's very thoughtful of it him. It was. <laughs> Told him if he ever sells it, I got first dibs at it, so had to buy it back. We spent a whole bunch of time fixing all the things that we never did when I owned it before we gave it to him. So now I get to enjoy it. You've been and driving I'm, it I'll bet you, I'm sure it's a little bit nicer since Matt's had it because I've seen his videos. He takes care of things. Detail, him detail, detail and stuff. Like it's too clean right now. I feel guilty yeah. getting in it and driving it. Uh, that's the way it probably should be taken care of. You think so? It's yeah. a patinaed square yeah, it's body. It's a little opposite of the way you took care of it when you had it before. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to balance out. Yeah, very yeah. cool truck though. Got all the keys for it. I'm going with the rental car approach. So if you lose one keychain, you lose everything. <laughs> Have you no? Are you gonna name that truck? Nope. Just not going to. Just yeah, I cars hit, don't it, need it, names. You can't be old blue. Yeah, uh, that's what I came up with back in the day. It was old blue because it's yeah, it's old. It's blue. We, we had, had an old blue. Yeah, we had an old blue. And when we uh, shit, well, I mean, I must have been five, six years old or something, and. Uh, my old man had one. It was it was probably a seventy, late mid to late seventies. Yeah. yeah, badass truck with the blue and white, three quarter ton. Never forget the headliner just always falling <laughs> down. That was back like you wonder now you see them with like the thumbtacks and oh, stuff in them. Yeah, and that was like just the separate fix. From yeah, the, I remember yeah. being at like the gas station like grabbing some thumbtacks to hook that perforated headliner back up in there. But, taking 
Cam out in it yet? They excited? Have. We did a little bit of cruising. Yep. He was super pumped. Came outside, heard it when I pulled in the driveway. He calls it my hot rod pickup truck. That's cool. Whoa, you got the hot rod pickup truck back. Nice. Yeah. Now you just got to be prepared to be profiled again. Yep. And <laughs> Excuse me, sir. There's no grasses to cut. No lawns to cut at 3 a.m. Why are you go- driving through this neighborhood? Sorry. That's a true story. Yeah. Uh well, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Good try. I like seeing it. I like seeing it out there. It's not like the brothers with the square bodies. You yeah. got one up, one down. Cool. You got the legend truck that I'm driving. And it's, it's like funny how that worked out. Back in the- you know? Yeah. All the hot rods and stuff and muscle cars yeah. we build, we ended up with two square body trucks. That I think and we need to do the uh gotta old get school. mine running. We'll have we'll all three have square bodies. Where is Tim on that? He's right where he was about a year and a half ago. Huh. Okay. Nowhere. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm going to tell you, this, I'm going to float you a compliment. I'm enjoying this cocktail. Are you though. enjoying it? Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that, that was recorded because that was the last time mm-hmm. you're going to get one. That made my night. Hey, that's like the second or third compliment I've given you in the past five years. That means your legs are about to be taken out from underneath you. Yeah. I, yeah. Build you up. Cut you down. What, hey, perseverance, right? That's right. That's what we learned. You heard it here. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> just, heard it from all of our guests. Yep. Just suck it up. And I am building perseverance in Josh <laughs> by just just smashing him down to the ground, <laughs> just destroying his <laughs> ego every day. All right. Back by popular demand, Whiskey Throttle. Now, if you're listening to the audio version, we recommend checking it out on our YouTube channel so you can get a closer look at these videos that we're watching. This segment is called Whiskey Throttle, and we basically just talk about any funny or dumb shit that we see online throughout the week. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Yeah, I man. I didn't, su- I, didn't hear... I didn't submit anything. Uh, no, you didn't. Week, you know, I was, I was out of town. Right. Yeah. Apologize for that. Yeah, but I've got a great, uh, a great submission that's just entertaining for anybody. So you go ahead and do your thing. You got a submission that you want. Well, not a you know just a just a site, an Instagram page that I think a submission you didn't submit. Yeah, submitting it now. Oh, okay. That's, he was really busy on vacation, not able to. Yeah, was, fuck, this get was on a Instagram and fuck around. Shit, ton of booze to drink. Like, yeah, we got the slideshow goat. Sideshow. Oh, dude, I've seen this. One. This is cool. I was so waiting for him to get just murdered by that yeah. car. Pretty cool. I don't get why people run out and try to get behind a car that's doing donuts. You know where that's going. I don't get it either. But dude's got some hops. Listen. Oh, oh he's getting, <laughs> getting after, after it. it. But he waits. Qualified he captain. waits till it gets. Bro, no. It's rare that you see again. Talk about perseverance. It's rare that you see anybody attempt. The escape. Out, yeah. Usually they just give up. Oh, yeah, but he waited like about a yeah, day late, feet too short. Too late. I want to know how that happens. I've backed a million boats down trailer or down loading ramps, launching ramps. I've never remotely had. Judging from that the comments, they said I, that it's in certain places that, ha- that are really, really slick and they just it instantly slides out. You hit the brakes and the front wheels. I think you need to. Keep you? It, so it's algae. Well, I think you need to be able to give up, is the problem. I think what happens. Is that as they're backing down, it's mostly it's gotta be well, that looked like four wheel drive, but in a two wheel drive truck, they're on the gas, and as it starts spinning, it slides, it starts sliding back. You need which to get is out a great of it time to just get out of it and, and hit the put brakes. The sucker in park, put the e-brake on, and ask like your best Miranda with his lifted F two fifty with you know twenty like twos on it to pull you out with you know, you can hook a chain to the you know, the big giant like balls or whatever hang off the back of them and pull you out of there. <laughs> Next up. Is a qualified captain I can watch all day. Do you see where oh, she's yeah. at? Oh, that's a leg. While it's running? Where? Remover. She's hanging off the swim platform right next to the motor. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Is that oh, my God. fucking smart. <laughs> he's going to turn. Hang on, he's turning left here. Oh, she's There's taking a be... piss. That's what she's doing. You yeah. think so? Yeah. But it, she shouldn't be doing that. No. no, yeah, definitely not when there's just a leg killer right next to you. Or at the loading. All right. Now we're ready for knife skills. Are you guys ready? Is this your video? You, you, you? you want to see yeah. my video? Yeah. No, this is phenomenal. Oh, yeah. This <laughs> is the fucking video. Right. This, this is Hold Josh on, wait, the knife wait. store. 
between under, the legs. Under the legs. Between the legs. <laughs> I never saw the between the legs part. <laughs> no, of it. I haven't either. How this often is, do you need to stab someone between your legs? This is like, the same guy. Can I flip it? Yeah. But I've never seen There's this. There's no audio with it. No. No. Oh my God. You've Look got at his to skills. find the you have to find the version with audio because this could quite possibly be the funniest video. We're gonna, on the internet. We're going to find it for, for next with yeah. Is this a joke? Is he I, doing No, it's legit. You when think you this hear, guy's real? Now that I see another video, dude, I think he's full of shit. When you hear the audio, it's 100% legit. Uh, went really bad. So this is legit whiskey. And boom. Oh. <laughs> he set it down at the absolute <laughs> yeah, worst time. Right in a hole. Phil's got Done. two bad knees from a wheelie incident. He could, Ooh. He could tell you about that. <laughs> Wheelies are no joke. Yeah, I currently have no ACL from a wheelie gone bad. Oh, that thing's going to... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you know, body! <laughs> uh, that reminds dude. me of the uh, golf cart video where we did the wheelies. Yeah. We had a lip, the back end lifted up on a forklift <laughs> and then dropped it and it just... Whoosh, Caught, hooked a wheelie and took really? it off. Yeah. And I, I showed my daughter, uh, Charlie, one of those, like a video with that song in it. You know, one of those where somebody's yeah. getting their ass kicked. And that just stuck. That's all I hear in the Some household. Body. body. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now we got our good friend Scott from Kentucky Ballistics. Oh, Probably, this is tough to watch. A lot yeah. of people have seen this video. Um, oh, man. This... This one's not near as funny because he's lucky to be alive. But how's he go doing check on out, that uh, trans? That's what I was going to bring up. Go ch go check out Scott at Kentucky Ballistics. He's got a well, give uh, the background on what happened there on the gun. Yeah. Oh, Blew it's basically it a, 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 his, a single like, shot bolt action uh, fifty cal that it blew the breech out of the back of the gun. It blew everything out of the so gun. Supposedly, it was a uh, it, was, it all came down to <laughs> a faulty uh, load on the round um and it i mean that was basically the f close to the full force of of that explosion in the in the round Backwards. sending that bolt all the way through there's a threaded cap and i forget the exact amount but he said it took it would take like eighty thousand psi to blow the threads off that thread on cap the way that gun is made and that all Can't went straight choose. into his neck um and that's where if you go and see his thing his the his tagline now is put a thumb in it. So that's he what has, saved his life. Yeah, he had he, he has EMT training, um, fireman training. He has and he had to shove his thumb into that hole and press on his carotid artery while his dad drove him to the hospital to keep him alive. Damn. Yeah. But he's also building a pretty badass four wheel drive Trans Am. Yeah. When is that going to be done? Uh, Trans Am Depot's working on it now. They just posted a few pictures on it a couple of weeks ago. So I think the body's sitting down on the chassis now. Um, is there, coming from Alabama, is there a more redneck vehicle than a lifted four-wheel drive? They're coming from, Trans forget about Alabama. Talk about Michigan. Yeah. yeah. That is a, like a central. El Camino would have been more redneck. <laughs> okay. But that's like a 76. Trans Am 78. Guy, guy, you know, He's got money. He was in, he, had, <laughs> yeah. he had an inheritance. Yeah. He, got a little, <laughs> he comes from a wealthy family. That's where I was. Yeah, that's where I was going. Uh, next up, I don't know if anybody saw this one. Uh, this was submitted by me. This is the new Raptor R, new V8 Ford Raptor coming from Ford. Quite the drift. Yeah. I think it sounds legit. Yeah, five uh, brand new ones coming out. What? Five two supercharged V eight. Five two. What is the? It's the, the Coyote, the, but the, the five point two instead of five zero. Um, now, this is something I don't think you guys have seen. This little special something. Pay attention. Oh, I've seen this. Bo. Hits the string hits the, and comes back. Hits the line yeah, on the that's other. That's something. This dude's crazy. So James Gene Trick Shots. You've got to check this guy out. This is... I got a couple more. Now watch this. This is something. Now watch. Watch. He catches the one that he shot up.
It's definitely. How do you do not try that. that at home? Do not try that at home, kids. Uh, and then last up, this is what I think is fucking not so crazy. Watch. Oh, it's like the Matrix. He's curving bullets. Is that not fucking wild? Mm, that's something. I can do that with a Nerf gun. Can you? No. You just do a little twist of the wrist? Yeah, yeah you go It's over the top. Yeah. Like, throw it. <laughs> that wasn't the Matrix. What movie was that? Angelina Jolie? Oh, you're right. I thought it was the Matrix, but you're... Uh, I don't remember the movie. Hmm. Yeah, they they would always right. take the pistol and be like... And like, yeah. flip it Curve over it. the top. It's like not, little top spin. I've tried that. that at the range a few times. Too. Can't do it. Not like yeah, that. Well, they don't like it. Yeah, I don't know no. why. It's, I'm curving a fucking bullet, dude. Uh, Chill out. Well, that'll do it for Whiskey Throttle. If you guys uh, have some funny videos that you want to send us, upload them to yeah. Instagram, hashtag at oil and whiskey, DM us, email us, snail mail us. Take a picture of the Instagram video fax that you it. watch, fax it in, Seems put it in the envelope. Well, however, you've got to get it to us. That's how Mike Ring would send it. Submit your videos for Whiskey Throttle. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening to Oil and Whiskey with the Roadster Shop and Ironclad Original. If you like the show, be sure to hop down there at the bottom and leave us a rating and review. Now that we're on YouTube, super easy. Leave a comment, like it, subscribe, download wherever you get your podcast. Thanks again to our guest, Josh Hart. We'll see you again next week.